Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. It's the end of April, but ooh, don't look now. Another freeze warning in effect for Metro Detroit for the overnight hours tomorrow. There's even a chance we might see more snowflakes again today as we look live at Mount Clemens. It looks great, but just probably a little on the chilly side. We're going to start right there this noon with the cold. I'm Jason Colthorpe. Let's bring in forewarned meteorologist Ashley Barrasi to track those temperatures and what feels more like winter than spring. Absolutely. I mean, we're so close to May, but boy, it doesn't feel that way. And since you joined us this morning on Local 4 News, we have a new round of freeze warnings going into tonight. So the round that we had last night expired at 8 o'clock this morning. It's going to be the exact same time frame tonight, same counties as well. And so right around the Lapeer area, towards Flint, down towards Monroe, you'll have to cover up any sensitive plants outside tonight until 8 a.m. tomorrow. We are tracking a brief break in the rain midweek, but we have an extended rainy period going into the weekend, which we'll get to in a few minutes. Clouds and radar forecast for now showing how those snow showers have fizzled out for the most part, but we do still have a little bit of a mixture out there. So most of southeastern Michigan getting a few light sprinkles, but we'll zoom into exact track 40 to show you that rain snow line. So that is going to be just west of Fowlerville between White Oak and Perry. You go a little farther south into portions of Washtenaw County and those snowflakes just to the west of Chelsea, very close to Manchester, where you could be seeing a little bit of that wintry mix. Otherwise, just gray out there, downtown Detroit 39. 37 in Ann Arbor, 46 though in Port Huron, 38 in Adrian. Today's afternoon high will struggle to get in the upper 40s in the city. We do have a gradual warm up. We're going to time that out for you coming up in just a few minutes. But if you're heading out the door, don't forget you want to take the radar with you on the go. Here's another great quality to our forewarned weather app. If you are outside and not actively looking at the radar, you'll also get a push notification if rain has been detected close to your location. All right, thanks, Ash. Uh, today marks nine years since the Flint water crisis began, changing so many lives in mid Michigan. Activists say much more still needs to be done to help the people of Flint nearly a decade later. Consumer investigator Hank Winchester has been following this crisis from the very beginning, and he joins us now live from Flint. Good afternoon, Hank. Jason, good afternoon to you. Hard, hard to believe, excuse me, that it has been nine years. It seems unbelievable. If you take a live look over my shoulder here, Jason, you'll see there's a group of community activists. Uh, they are here spreading the message of how they feel about Flint today. And let me tell you what, it's not a good feeling. Take a look at some video. Their concerns right now, the fact that all of the pipes have not yet been replaced in the city, yet we've seen other cities that have had problems and their pipes have been replaced. They're upset about the financial settlement between the state of Michigan and the residents of Flint. And they're also very upset that nobody is being held criminally responsible for what happened in this community when that water was switched to the Flint River nine years ago. Take a listen. Water is a human right, and there should not be any shutoffs due to the inability to pay. Yet, we have people getting water shut off every day in the city of Flint due to the inability to pay. And even though we had a $300 credit um, through ARPA, a credit is not enough to tackle the cost of people not having water in their homes. And that was activists talking about the other issue they're upset about. As you heard, uh, the shutoff of water here in this community. So nine years later, there's been a lot of progress, no doubt. There are educational programs in place, Jason. There are medical programs to help those that are affected. But the bottom line is many people in this community still upset with how that financial settlement uh, went down and also concerned regarding the legal aspect of this case and the criminal aspect moving forward. So we're going to spend the day here in Flint talking with the people that are are impacted by this crisis and that are still dealing with the ramifications of it today. We'll see you back here live starting at five o'clock. For now, Jason, back to you. Yeah, just uh, something when a uh, basic need interrupted that way just takes years and years to set right. Hank, we appreciate it. We have sad news to report this noon. Harry Belafonte, a groundbreaking singer and civil rights activist, has died. Belafonte was one of the first black performers to gain a wide following on film and to sell a million records as a singer. Many still know him, for you can hear it there, his signature hit, Deo, the Banana Boat Song. In the 60s, Belafonte became a civil rights leader, and in that movement, working closely with the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Belafonte died today of congestive heart failure at his home in New York. 
Harry Belafonte was 96. This afternoon, police are looking for clues in the death of a well-known doctor. 53-year-old Devon Hoover was a neurosurgeon at Ascension Hospital in Detroit. Police found him shot to death in his home in the Boston Edison neighborhood. Investigators made the discovery during a welfare check over the weekend. Right now, there is no word on any suspects. To decision 2024, now President Biden making it official this morning. He is running for president. The campaign announcement comes on the fourth anniversary of his 2020 announcement. Bree Jackson in Washington for us, where the race for president starting to take shape now. So if you're with me. It's official. That's why I'm running for re-election. Sources tell NBC News, finish the job will be a key theme of Mr. Biden's re-election campaign. Freedom. Personal freedom is fundamental to who we are as Americans. There's nothing more important, nothing more sacred. The president building upon the central theme of his 2020 campaign, battle for the soul of the nation. Even before making an official announcement, the president's top political foe weighed in. In a lengthy statement, former President Donald Trump blames Biden for record numbers of immigrants crossing the southern border illegally and for inflation hurting American families' finances, setting up a potential Biden-Trump rematch, something our latest NBC News poll shows most voters do not want, nor do they want Mr. Biden to run again. But if he's the one, if he's the front runner, then he's the one I'm going to vote for. Donald Trump is so much worse. If there was somebody younger and sharper running for president for the Democrats, I would probably prefer them over Joe Biden. Mr. Trump's support among the GOP is growing, despite being indicted on charges of falsifying business records. 68 percent of Republicans say the charges are politically motivated. And today, President Biden will hold an event here in Washington, D.C., where he's expected to highlight his investments in manufacturing and jobs created under his administration, a possible preview of his pitch to voters moving forward. In Washington, Bree Jackson, NBC News. All right, Bree, we appreciate it. A former Michigan House speaker pleads guilty in a bribery scheme. Rick Johnson admits to taking bribes while he led the state's marijuana licensing board. Investigators say he accepted at least $110,000 in exchange for approving applications. Johnson served as House Speaker for the Republican-controlled House from 2001 through 2004. He's the second person now to plead guilty in that scheme in the last week. Big electric vehicle news from General Motors. The automaker ending production of the Chevy Bolt by the end of this year. CEO Mary Barr making that announcement to investors this morning. The Bolt makes up the vast majority of GM's EV sales. Barra says production at the Orient Assembly Plant will shift to the Silverado EV pickup instead. The first phase of the revamped old train station in Corktown is being unveiled this afternoon by Ford. The restored book depository at Michigan Central will be the headquarters for New Lab Detroit. It's a space for entrepreneurs, inventors, and companies to come together with a focus on the future of mobility. The opening starts this afternoon at 3. Local 4 will be there, you can bet. We'll have that for you on later newscasts.